Hi all and welcome to this uh, MIDI Armory modular missiles ballistic tutorial in which I'm going to I'm going to explain in detail how you can build a, an advanced mm, ballistic missile uh, with for real solar system using far and yeah all the beauties. So first of all, before going into detail, going into the game, I'm going to explain like the dependencies, requirements that you have, that you need to in order to, in order to be able to create a modular missile, uh, a long range modular missile. So first of all, let's talk about the the mods that I am using. That basically you need a BD armory, of course. It doesn't matter if you want to use BD Armory Plus or the, the, the Legacy BD Armory, let's say. But yeah, you need BD Armory, of course. You need my mod, uh, the BD Modular Missile Part, which depends on um, the procedural part mod. Okay. Apart from that, I am using also a smart parts uh, for this tutorial. Basically, during in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about if you saw my previous video, if you watched my previous video about the, the ballistic missile the, for the 600 kilometers uh, range. So I basically I'm going to explain that missile in detail. So for that one, I am using smart smart parts as well. And yeah, and yeah, and I'm using real trust system as usual. You know that I am a real trust system guy. So yeah. Um. Okay. Ah yeah. I almost forgot. As always, B9 Perseveral Wings is also my is a my must have. Okay, uh, it's the best way to to have a nice uh, wind elevons, etc. Okay. Also, apart from the mods, you need to do some modifications, some tweaks in order to do like a long range ballistic missile. And the modifications that actually I will put it on in the description of the video, but I, let me just show you to you exactly what you have to do. So in the settings for the BD Armory, there is a first of all you need to increase the range as much as you want. Basically, uh, for my video it was 600, 600 kilometers, but this is for basically 2,000 kilometers. So yeah. This you can put here whatever you fancy, okay? I mean, I mean, if you want to do a 100 kilometer test, you can go. You you will be fine, yes, with uh, 200,000, okay? Um, yeah. Apart from that, you need also to change, and this is the like the key setting to in order to do this. You need to ignore the terrain check. The reason why you have to do it is because it's quite likely that. Um, the your target is farther than I don't know how much is it, 40 kilometers 70 I don't know but basically your target might be below the um, horizon right and if it's below below the horizon basically uh, you are not going to be able to do like a rather rather lock on it because uh, yeah there is no uh, direct line of sight right so yeah you need to put this to true and then BD Armory will ignore the terrain and basically will allow you to lock on uh, whatever target uh, regardless of how far you, how far is it and apart from that you need also to change uh, you need to tweak uh, the rudder the ground rudder and for that you have here the ground radar folder and here you have the radar one you can edit it and you will need to have a more extreme radar detection curve and radar lock track curve and basically you can use these values if you want that will allow you to lock into targets that are even 10,000 kilometers away which is, is quite extreme right <laughs> and, and that's it with this you will be able to do exactly what I, I am doing in this video Okay, now let's go into the game. So what you have here is the missile that I was using for the video that I recorded a few days ago. So let's go step by step. Let's just try to break it down into something that makes sense. So first of all, the first part I have here is the procedural high, high explosive. 
this is a quite big missile I have like a 300 kilograms of high explosive which is quite extreme with an estimated blast radius of 106 meters which is yeah quite extreme um, so for expl the explosives you can use either the procedural the procedural one that is this one or you can you can just use this one if you want if you want as well that would be would be enough so if you fancy you don't want to use the procedural parts it's not mandatory to create a, mi a missile with uh, the BD armory procedural parts you can just go with the stock parts as well so yeah in this case you have here a TNT mass equivalent 150 kilograms which is uh, less than this okay also as you can see here I have some burner engines for attitude control the reason why I need active control is basically because this missile is meant for a long range and most part of the flight path, as usual with ballistic missiles, is going to be in vacuum. So I need to be able to keep the prograde attitude, attitude in during the most part of the flight path. The flight path. So yeah, I, I need RCS for that. Um, I have also a, yeah, a reaction wheel which will help as well to, to keep it the, the missile uh, with the right attitude um, and then the key part, right? the mi missile core so I hope you can see the settings but basically I am using the ballistic cadence and using the radar tar targeting mode I have, I have here an active radar range of almost 600 kilometers you can go in my case now that I change the settings you can go up to 2000 kilometers then for this specific missile we have two stages we have a solid um, solid f a solid one okay an SRB basically uh, we will provide like the first kick um, and will get me out of uh, pretty much all the dense atmosphere and then we have a liquid, liquid fuel basically oxidizer um, engine in my case I am using my favorite, my favorite one that is the vector I mean if you are just using the stock parts in my opinion the vector is the most versatile one uh, I have a proper gimbal and it's uh, very powerful so I suggest to go ahead with this one if you want to to create a to implement to design a proper missile with stock parts. Okay, so let's continue with the settings. Um, I am you, depending on the missile and the air, air surface air surface that you have. I do need to tweak the steer factor stick factor steam damping. So in my case, I am using just a low st steer damping and a steer factor of five. Roll correction. You don't need roll correction for. A, I don't recommend to activate roll correction for a ballistic missile, unless you want to keep the missile just yes, you know in the same path, uh, completely static. But I I I think the roll correction is only meaningful for cruise missiles. Okay. So roll correction is disabled, uh, time between stages is 1, the mean speed before guidance is 200 meters per second and uh, again for this one you will need to, to find the right for you because I am using FAR here so I am going full, full realistic let's say um, if I try to, if the mean speed is very low uh, it's, the chances are that my missile is going to stall um, yeah, uh, that's not, not, not good, okay? So, yeah, I would say the faster, the better. But, yeah, you don't want to spend a lot of time just flying straight. So, you, you need to find, uh, like, uh, the right, uh, the sweet spot for this one. And mass static launch range, yeah, you can go as realistic as you want. In my case, I'm just maxing out this number, the mean static launch range, yeah, again, uh, and using the minimum value. The max of boreside, I, you, I always go to the max. I am, yeah, I am trying to do an extreme test. I don't care about if it's realistic or not. And the detonation distance override, and this value 
it depends on how the amount of high explosive that you have in my case i have uh, quite a lot so if i try to detonate at uh, 15 meters in this case it's good because i'm going to blow up the whole thing <laughs> if you try to to maybe to detonate at zero meters uh, maybe the damage is not going to be the same or even if you fail to hit the target uh, because the target is quite small or you yeah your, your missile was not properly tuned yeah you're going to fail badly and you're not going to do anything at all to the target so 15 is a sweet spot for this missile drop time if you are firing your missile from a ground base or something like that you don't need really any drop time uh, the missile the missile is going off um, straight and you're fine e, on the other hand if you're firing your missile from a plane maybe you want to yeah especially for this big boy you want to you want to have some time for the missile for dropping although i don't suggest to fire a cruise missile from a plane uh, yeah when it tries to to turn and go in in the ballistic angle um, maybe it was, it's going to fail to achieve the angle, maybe, maybe it's going to stall or something. Um, finally, the, this is the, and these are the, the important ones for the ballistic missile. So for a ballistic missile you have the ballistic overshoot factor. By default, maybe by default the, the fall value is fine for your missile, or maybe you will need to tweak it. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, I, I suggest to, first of all, try the default value. If you think that the missile is is maybe a bit short in this sense you will need to increase it or if you think that the missile is overshooting uh, you will need to uh, reduce this value a bit okay finally also we have the angle uh, the higher the angle as you can imagine the the greater the angle the higher is going to fly and the most time is going to spend on i don't know vacuum or higher altitude and the lower the the angle, the more time is going to spend on atmosphere, and the faster the horizontal velocity will be. So chances are, if you lower the value, um, you you have a lower value, you will you will spend more fuel, likely. You have a higher a higher angle path you will spend initially more fuel to get the like to the altitude or the apoapsis that you need and uh, they will be more efficient because more part of the flight is going to be on a less dense part of the atmosphere i hope that makes sense finally the engage the engage uh, range you can max this out that's fine and you can also select if you want to engage air missile surface i have everything to true um, and that's it um, you can also set, set the name, okay? So you can set the name here. Um, so you can put here whatever, and that's it. Okay, now let's continue with the missile now that I spent some time explaining the settings. So here is the core, and then we have a big, uh, let's say, the second stage of the missile with uh, quite a, a big amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer. I, I decided to, um, to put here like two small vector engines instead of having like a big one down here uh, it's basically because yeah let me let me let me show you now let me, let's put the uh, um, center of mass and center of lift i have a big one down here the mass is going to be more more yeah in the rear part and i want to have like a more something more stable um, during the whole duration of the flight path so as always, quite important. If you're designing a missile, you need to ensure that uh, the center of mass is going to be always in front of the center of lift. And in this case, uh, this means that at this point here, we're not, then with the second stage, uh, the couples uh, is going to be more maneuverable, and then. All, most part of the center of mass is going to be on the front when we let's say we, we we reach like the latest steps of the terminal the terminal phase of the of the cruising okay and as actually this is good because this missile with a 60 degree angle 
when it comes down in a 60 kilometer range it's coming hot like very hot uh, and i need i need the center of mass to be as in front as possible because it's coming very fast and this means that with this configuration even if i don't steer at all the missile the missile is going down it's down it's head down okay so that's good okay um also here, I mean, you can also check here the aerodynamics, which I also recommend to check uh, the design, the Chassoni the cross, so the cross sectional area curve here, and also the pressure here. You can take a look at here and try to optimize your aerodynamics, okay? So let's say, for example, here, let's see, I, actually, I don't remember which was the value, but from, let's put here 10 kilometers, and let's say here that we are going hypersonic okay i mean there are some values in red but for the most part i would say that it's fine if i put mat number 10 yeah i mean i can tell you that this is it's working more or less fine okay um okay let's continue then uh the engines so what i have here you can see here that I have reduced the gimbal uh, from 100 to 30 because I, I was feeling that the, the, the missile was like uh, over over steering so it, was, it was not very on control so I, I decided to, to reduce the gimbal a bit what else let's go for the wins now control surface so I have only Pete and Joe control 20% uh, that's more than enough um, if you feel that your missile is like uh, missing a target or not maybe not, it's not able it's not able to steer enough you just need to increase it as much as you feel that is necessary to to have a proper control although most part of the time you will just need to maybe to play a bit with the uh, tweak a bit the steer damp and steer factor okay <coughs> Now let's go for the first stage. Yeah, as you can see here, also I have our RCS control here, Pernod engines. Um, I added two on board cameras that I am basically controlling with my mod. With my mod, of course, I still love you. And basically, our whole gun VDS cameras. Okay. Now <clears throat> let's go for the first stage that, as I mentioned, is a basically a procedural SRB. Um, that nothing much to say about that as I am using a stack, uh, stack separator <clears throat> and I, I'm using here two sets of uh, basically a winlet and also the uh, procedural control surface because I basically I needed more I, I, need, I needed more leaf um, so area here in this uh, rear part to keep it um, to keep it under control <clears throat> and for the procedural SRP, as again, I am reducing the gimbal to 33 again. Okay. Now, let's talk about the the TWR thrust weight ratio. Uh, I have a 1.6. That maybe you might think that is a bit low for for a missile, but it's actually good because you want to be as efficient. Okay. I am packing quite a lot of delta P here. I mean, if I go for atmospheric, uh, I have 5.2 kilometers per second. So I mean, if I I am pretty sure that if I add a third stage, a solid one, like a first stage with two boosters, solid, then the second stage this one booster and the third stage uh, the liquid fuel one, I'm pretty sure that maybe I can even have enough delta V to almost almost <laughs> reach Leo. But yeah, 5.2 kilometers for a ballistic missile is, is, is quite a lot. So I have one point I have one point sixty two for the first state with a solid RSRB. Have one point eighty two for the second one. Okay. Now the stages um here 
in the first stage I have the activate engine I am activating also the, the, the RCS thrusters um, on the second stage basically I am decoupling here the, the first stage I am activating the second stage which I actually I just removed it okay yeah about the toggling the RCS trust is because at the very first I thought that maybe it was activated so I was deactivating it in the first stage and then activating it again in the second stage um, and that's it that's it uh, now what I usually do in order to let's say deploy the missile or to, 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 to put a missile on a, a launcher what I do is um, or what I suggest for you to do is to basically let me first of all remove and uh, disable this okay so what I like to do is I put for example an extract here then I reroute to this part and that's it and then I save the missile as an assembly assemb assemb here whatever you want here you can drop it and then you can basically uh, drag and drop it uh, in your launcher and I'm going to show you now uh, launcher uh, the launcher with the missile already in place okay by the way I noticed that I don't know if it's procedural parts of two scale or something but sometimes something strange is happening when I try to drag and drop let me let me show you here just in case that the same happens to you okay let's see if I can yeah maybe I, I can see it now but yeah I don't know what is going on yeah here so sometimes I don't know why but yeah, you can see that the, the, f the first part is like detached from the, the rest of the body. I don't know, missile, this has started happening to me with the, the, in this version with the 112.3. I don't know if it's procedural parts, if, I, if it's actually BD modular missiles. But if the same happens to you, just let me know in the comments. Uh, let me tell you if you, find, if you find out what is going on, please let me know because I am interested. Okay, so this is the missile already let's say attached to this launcher um, also to this version I added something interesting that is the the altimeter from the smart parts because I finally decide to use the altimeter to decide when I want to activate the RCS thrusters okay so basically what I am doing um, if the missile is going at higher altitude than 40 kilometers soon as uh, we reach uh, 40 kilometers is going to activate the RCS group so that means that the RCS thrusters will be working and, and that's pretty much it I think now we can go ahead and give it a go right so let me let me launch it Here we are. Okay, if you see that cube there, it's not that you are dreaming or, I mean, uh, it's, it's not a glitch, it's actually a, a static part that they put there, like to have a greater view when I was recording that video, okay, of the ballistic missile. Yes, yeah, quite neat, right? Nice. <laughs> okay, now let's go and spawn a target. So I have here like a boat. okay first of all we have a seven kilometers target that's fine so oh damn it yeah. let's move the vessel um let me first track the distance that we have so okay 10 kilometers 
60, 100. So we go for, I don't know, 180 kilometers. That's more than enough. Okay, so now let's look on the target. It's here. Let's fire this big boy. So after we reach uh, the 200, 200 meter per second, the missile, the missile is going to steer. Uh, or a 60, it's going to target a 60 degree angle and it's going to continue the, its ascent, ascent to the Okay, as you can see here we are 60 degrees We are flying nominal is slowing down because it's, it now has reached the altitude required. So basically the way it works uh, is going to calculate like the time it will take to do a free fall for this distance and the time that it will try the distance that it will travel horizontally during the time that is free falling. So if, uh, if the time is greater then that means that we already have enough, enough speed to reach the target. So we are at 133 kilometers from the target. And we are flying at Mach Mach 2.4 So you can see also that the algorithm is automatically setting the, the missile to do a prograde And I don't know what the heck is going on there <laughs> It's going over here. It's freaking out. Now we are about to see the, the target. Yeah. So here we are, 97 kilometers. And the missile is in a few seconds it's going to begin like, begin like the terminal phase ok, here we go Mark 3 
meters distance to the target. enjoy destruction okay so that's it I hope you enjoy the, the tutorial and that you learned something today and if you have any comments or doubts just let me know see you soon <laughs>